So this lesson is about Taylor polynomials. Um, the idea is that polynomials, or polynomial functions, are um, easy. And other functions are hard. So the goal is to approximate an arbitrary function by a polynomial. Of course, we have to understand what approximate means, but let's start with a simple case. Suppose we let f of x be the function e to the x. So the graph looks something like that. And suppose we want to approximate e to the x. Now, this is not a polynomial, so you can't approximate it everywhere by a polynomial. But what you can try to do is at some point, in the neighborhood of some point, try to approximate it by a polynomial. For example, uh, this is the point zero one. Um, suppose we want to approximate e to the x at x equals zero by a linear polynomial. So let's call this polynomial p of x, polynomial. Now, when x is zero, e to the x is one. So, of course, you wanted to approximate this by a constant polynomial at zero. The best you could do is just take the constant function one. If you want to approximate it by a linear polynomial, so there's something times uh, x, you could say, well, let's suppose we want p of zero to be the value of this function at zero. That's e to the zero, which is one. And what is a one? If you differentiate the polynomial, the derivative is a one. So we could also want that um, the derivative of this function at zero is the same as the derivative of the e to the x function at zero. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this would also be zero. So we choose, let me call this P1, because it's a polynomial of degree one. P1 equal to one plus one times x. So this is a linear polynomial. And the graph looks like that. So the further you get away from zero, the worse this straight line approximates the exponential function, but in some neighborhood of zero, it's actually a pretty close fit. So in a certain sense, this polynomial one plus x is the best, the best linear approximation to e to the x around x equals zero. Now you can think, well, we'd probably do better if we approximated e to the x by a quadratic polynomial. Because then we have more parameters, more coefficients of the, po of the polynomial to use. So again, this is the graph of y equals e to the x. And let's say we want to find a polynomial p2 of x, which is going to be a quadratic a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared that satisfies these conditions. First, the value at the function of zero, the value of the polynomial at zero is the same as the value of my function at zero. Again, the function f of x is e to the x. The derivative at zero is the derivative of my function at zero. And the second derivative at zero is the second derivative of my function at zero. So what does that mean? Of course, we know what these values are because the derivative of e to the x 
and the second derivative are just e to the x. So all of these numbers, in this case, this is e to the zero or one, e to the zero or one, e to the zero or one. How is this related to the polynomial? Well, p2 of x is a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. So p2 of 0 is a0, and that has to be 1. What's the derivative of this polynomial? Get a1 plus 2a2x. So the derivative evaluated at 0 is a1. So that also has to be 1. What's the second derivative? It's 2a2. So the second derivative at 0, which is 2a2, also has to be 1. So a2 has to be a half. So my quadratic polynomial, which is going to give what turns out to be the best possible approximation to the exponential function around x equals 0, is the following p2 of x is 1 plus x plus a half x squared. So this is the second degree approximation. And in general, given a function f of x, if we want to find the nth degree approximation, By this we mean a polynomial p sub n of x of degree n. And what we want to do is choose this polynomial where the kth derivative of this polynomial is at zero is the kth derivative of the function at 0 for k 0, 1, 2, up to n for all the coefficients of all the derivatives. So let's do one more. Um, let's find the cubic polynomial, the, degree, the third degree approximation to the exponential function. So if p of x is a cubic polynomial, p3 of x, <clears throat> so p3 at 0 is the constant term. What's the first derivative? When you differentiate once, you get a1 plus a 2a2x plus 3a3x squared. So the first derivative at 0, when you let x equals 0, these terms die. Just get a1. What's the second derivative? So yes, yeah, so what's the second derivative? If you differentiate this again, you get 2a2 plus 3 times 2a3x. So when you evaluate the second derivative at 0, this term disappears, you get 2a2. What's the third derivative? You differentiate it again, you get 3 times 2a3. And when you evaluate this at 0, it's just 3 times 2a3. Notice, by the way, that 3 times 2, so there's a simple function in mathematics called the factorial. So n factorial for any positive integer n is the product of all the integers up to n. This is for n a positive integer. 0 factorial is defined to be 1. So I could actually write this also as 0 factorial times a0, 1 factorial, which is 1 times a1. 2 is the same as 2 times 1, or 2 factorial. 3 times 2 times 1 is 3 factorial, a3. And 
I want this to be the function at zero, the derivative at zero, the second derivative at zero, the third derivative at zero. So for my cubic polynomial, I have the following formulas for the coefficients. A zero is f prime of zero. A is f of zero, not f prime. A1 is the derivative at zero. A2 is the second derivative at zero over two factorial. And A3 is the third derivative at zero over three factorial. I could also write this as over zero factorial and over one factorial because they're just one. So if f of x is e to the x, then every derivative of the exponential function is e to the x. And so every derivative evaluated at zero is e to the zero or one. So we get the polynomial, the cubic polynomial that approximating the exponential function is one plus x plus a half x squared plus one over three factorial or six x cubed. So this is the cubic or third degree approximation to e to the x. Let's take another function to approximate. Suppose we take f of x to be cosine x. So f prime of x is minus the sine. The second derivative is minus the cosine. And the third derivative is plus the sine. If we evaluate these at zero, we get one, zero, minus one, zero. So for the polynomial that's going to approximate the cosine, it's one, the coefficient of x is zero, the coefficient of x squared is minus one over two factorial minus a half x squared, and the coefficient of x cubed is zero. So this is approximating the cosine near this is y equals cosine x. And the approximating polynomial, it's actually this upside down parabola, looks like that. So this is P3 of x equal one minus a half x squared. It's zero at one, so it agrees with the cosine. And I'm down, it looks like this. And, and here's the cosine. So you can actually see, and if you use MAPE or some other graphing uh, computer program, you would see that this parabola actually does fit the cosine very nicely. If we had wanted to calculate the fourth degree polynomial, the coefficient A4 would be the fourth derivative at zero over four factorial. So here, if we were computing a fourth degree polynomial, the fourth derivative of x is the cosine. The fourth derivative of the cosine at zero is one. So we would get a plus of one over four factorial, which is 24 x cubed. We would have actually a better fitting, sorry, x to the fourth. This would be the 
fourth degree polynomial approximating the cosine. So the general um, name for this approximating polynomial is called a Taylor polynomial. And in a special case, actually the case we've just been looking at, it's a Maclaurin polynomial. And these are the same thing when you're approximating uh, the, your unknown, your function uh, around x equals zero. In general, um, you can try to approximate a function at any point. If you have some function y equals f of x, and it has some funny graph, this is the graph of the function, and you take some number c, so here on the graph is the point c comma f of c. You might want to approximate your function, not at zero, but at any point. So the Taylor polynomial is, this is going to approximate f of x at x equals c for any c. The Clarin polynomial is just an approximation at x equals zero. And uh, I prefer just to call all these polynomial Taylor polynomials. And, but historically at x equals zero, this approximating polynomial is also called the Maclaurin polynomial. So what, do, what does it look like to approximate a polynomial or to approximate a, a function at a point C? So we're used to writing polynomials as sums of powers of x, but also if you take a, a function p of x and write this as a zero plus a one times x minus c plus a two times x minus c squared and so forth, a n over x minus c to the n or p n of x. This is also a polynomial of degree at most n. If a n is different from zero, this degree uh, is exactly n, but a n could be zero and you could have a polynomial of lower degree. But an expression of this form is always a polynomial of degree at most n. And given f of x, we want to find the Taylor polynomial Pn of x of degree at most n that approximates in some sense best approximates f of x. And by best approximating f of x, we want the polynomial to satisfy the following conditions. First, if you evaluate the polynomial with c, that's the value of the function at c. The first derivative of c, of f at c, of p, the polynomial at c, is the first derivative of the function at c. The second derivative of the polynomial agrees with the second derivative of the function at c. All the way down till you get to the nth derivative at c, and that's exactly equal to the value of the nth derivative of the function at c. Now, if you start with your polynomial and begin to differentiate it, what, let's see what happens. Suppose we take our polynomial and we write it in this form. A zero, A one X minus C, A two X minus C squared up to A N X minus C to the N. If you differentiate it once, the constant term disappears you get a1 plus 2a2x minus c squared. Your next term would be 3a3, sorry, x minus c, not squared. 
differentiate this. The next term will give you 3a3x minus c squared up to n a n x minus c to the n. And then when you differentiate again, you get 2a2 plus 3 times 2a3x minus c up to n n minus 1 a n x minus c to the n minus 2. And as you keep differentiating, when you get to the nth derivative, what you actually have is just n factorial a sub n. Now, when you plug in x equals c, all these x minus c terms disappear. So we get pn evaluated as c is a0. Pn prime, the first derivative evaluated at c, is a1. The second derivative evaluated at c is 2a2. And in general, the, nth der the kth derivative evaluated at c is k factorial a sub k. So if the kth derivative of this polynomial evaluated at c is k factorial a sub k. And we want to choose the coefficients of the polynomial so that this is the same as the kth derivative of the function at c. This gives us a formula for the coefficient of the polynomial. a sub k is going to equal 1 over k factorial, or the kth derivative at c divided by k factorial. And that, that is the fundamental identity that you have to know about Taylor polynomials. So now let me write down what is the main result of this discussion. You have a function f of x, which has at least n derivatives. The Taylor polynomial of degree at most n for f of x is the following polynomial. p sub n of x equals, it's the value of the function at 0 plus the, sorry, uh, at x equals c. Well, I'll do it first at x equals 0. Is the value of the function at 0, the derivative of 0 times x, <coughs> The second derivative at zero over two factorial x squared. The third derivative at zero over three factorial x cubed up to the nth derivative at zero over n factorial x to the n. So for example, let's compute this for f of x equal e to the x. So for this function, the kth derivative of the exponential function is e to the x. And so the kth derivative at 0 is 1 for all k. So all of these derivatives at 0 are equal to 1. So the polynomial that's approximating e to the x at x equal 1, at x equals 0, is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the fourth over 4 factorial, up to x to the n over n factorial. That's the polynomial that approximates the exponential function. Suppose we take another example. Suppose we take, well, let's go back to f of x equal cosine x. So what are the derivatives? Cosine, first derivative is minus the sine. Second derivative is minus the cosine. Third derivative is plus the sine. Fourth derivative is the cosine. So this repeats. Every time you take the function, you differentiate it four times, you're back where you started. What are the values of these at zero? 
cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, minus the cosine is minus one, sine of zero is zero. And then it repeats. So the sequence of coefficients, the sequence of derivatives of the cosine at x equals zero, they go through this repeating pattern, one zero, minus one zero, one zero, minus one zero, and so on. So the Taylor polynomial for cosine of x is one minus x squared over two factorial. You only have even powers of x and the signs alternate positive and negative x to the fourth over four factorial minus x to the sixth over six factorial up to minus one to the um, k. So we're going up to n equals two k even. You get minus one to the uh, k over n factorial x to the n. So you have this alternating sum of terms with even powers of x. Taylor polynomial at x equals c is the polynomial that looks like this. P sub n of x, you have is constant term, a zero, plus a one, well, a zero is just going to be so the Taylor polynomial at x equals c for some function f of x. It's going to be f of zero plus, sorry, f of c. We were approximating an x equals c plus f prime of c x minus c plus the second derivative at c over two factorial x minus c squared plus the third derivative at c over three factorial x minus c cubed all the way up to the nth derivative at c over n factorial x minus c to the n. So for example, this let f of x equal the log of x. And we want, so the log of x is only defined for positive values. It's equal to zero at one. Suppose we want to approximate the log of x around x equal to c, x equal to one. So we have to know the value of the derivatives of this function at one. So we start to do this calculation of just differentiating log x. f of x is log x. So f of one is log one is zero. The first derivative of the log is one over x. So at one, f prime of one is one over one, which is one. The second derivative is minus one over x squared. So the second derivative is minus one. The third derivative is minus one times minus two. It's two over x cubed. So the third derivative is two. The fourth derivative, we multiply by minus three, we get minus three times two over x to the fourth. So the fourth derivative evaluated at one is minus three factorial. This is two factorial. What's the fifth derivative? Let's differentiate again. Multiply this by minus four we get four times three times two over x to the fifth. So the fifth factorial, the fifth derivative evaluated at one is four factorial is four factorial. And 
if you look at this, what do you see? This is one, which is zero factorial, minus one, which is one factorial. It starts at zero and then it goes zero factorial, minus one factorial, plus two factorial, minus three factorial, plus four factorial. And in general, the kth derivative of the logarithm is minus one to the power k minus one, k minus one factorial over x to the k. So if we evaluate the kth derivative at one, we get minus one to the k minus one times k minus one factorial. And what is the kth coefficient of the Taylor polynomial? So, so we have that for f of x equal the logarithm of x at x equal one, the kth derivative of this function evaluated at one is minus one to the k minus one times k minus one factorial. So if I take this and divide by k factorial, I get minus one to the power k minus one k minus one factorial over k factorial. k minus one factorial, this is the product of the integers from one to k minus one. k factorial is the product of the integers from one to k. This cancels this and only leaves a k. We just get minus one to the k minus one over k. And this is the kth coefficient in the Taylor polynomial. So we get the following Taylor polynomial for log x at x equal one. It's zero, that's the constant term, plus x and k is one. This is zero, x over one, minus the signs alternate over two, this x squared over two plus x cubed over three, minus x to the fourth over four, plus x to the fifth over five, up to minus one to the n minus one, x to the n over n. So that is a very beautiful thing. That is the Taylor polynomial for the log of x, expanded around x equal one. And it is strongly advised that you do as many problems as you can calculating these Taylor polynomials. These are in the homework in section 9.7. Because this absolutely and positively will definitely will be on the final exam. Okay, anyway, that is it for Taylor polynomials for right now. <laughs>